In this episode of Restore It, I'm going to be working on the Mercedes with the goal of getting it closer to its full respray. There are a few things that need doing before it will be ready for the spray booth, but most importantly is the bodywork. One of the front wings needs looking at, and the engine bay needs to be painted, something I'm going to do at my workshop during this episode. I still need to finish my welds off with filler before the real finishing layers can be done by a professional next episode. As you can see, one of these wings is in perfect condition, and the other is full of rust. The plan was to address each patch one by one once all of the surface rust is out of the way. I've decided shot blasting is going to be the better option for the inside as there are lots of nooks and crannies to get into. It was at this point that I showed the owner the damage and offered to spend the time fixing it but also sent him a link to a replacement panel which thankfully he chose to go for. So that made things easier and quicker for me, the panel arrived in about two days. Up next, I'm going to clean the wheel arches, finish off the welds and paint the engine bay. Before we carry on, I want to thank the sponsor of this episode, Avalon King, a company I'm very excited to work with and one that's regarded as the best at what it does. Avalon King and their Armour Shield 9 is regarded as the best home DIY ceramic kit you can buy. It's like a wax on steroids that gives your car a glass-like shine with a hydrophobic surface making it super easy to clean and maintain. Armour Shield 9 protects your car from all manner of dirt and weather for 2-5 to five years depending on storage and other factors, but Avalon King actually guarantee it for the first 2 years. It's extremely easy to apply and although it's been specifically designed for hobbyists and car enthusiasts, it's trusted and used by professionals too. Using the included applicator pad and cloth, cover all of the hard surfaces of your vehicle including the windows, lights, plastic and chrome trim. Utilising the latest in nanotechnology, Armour Shield's scratch resistant ceramic coating forms a strong glass like protective layer above your paint. The word nano refers to the size of the molecules or particles in the coating itself. These particles range from 80 to 100 nanometers. This doesn't mean a lot to most people, but to put it into scale, there are 25 million nanometers in an inch. Because the particles are so small, when applied to the surface, they seal all the pores making the surface hydrophobic but also resistant to UV, chemicals, extreme heat and even graffiti. And one of my favourite benefits of Armour Shield 9 is that it acts as a sacrificial layer for small scratches, meaning that your actual car paint isn't damaged. The Armour Shield 9 kit contains everything you need to achieve a professional finish that would typically cost you over £1000, thus saving you hundreds. So click the link at the top of the video description to order your kit today and get the feeling of driving a new car every day. It's available in a small, easy and affordable size that will get your car protected and self-cleaning. Big thanks to Avalon King for supporting the channel. Let's get back to the Mercedes, a car I know I'll be using Armour Shield 9 on. Now I know it looks like I'm putting undercoating onto a dirty car, but this is really as clean as I could get it. It would always dry and go back to looking old and filthy, no matter what chemicals I used. This is just a first coat. All of these parts are going to be removed out of the way for the second and maybe third coat if it needs it. And I think that's looking much better even after the first coat. If you've been keeping up with the welding work on this Mercedes, you'll know that the original plan was for me to do four rust spots, one in each corner of the car. Those four rust spots ended up being the very start of the welding work needed on this car. All said and done, I ended up doing 19 separate rust spots, some of which needed four or five separate pieces making up. I wasn't much of a welder before this project, and I'm still not great, but this car sure has taught me a thing or two. I would now consider myself a decent amateur. My filling techniques, however, definitely need improvement. Just looking back at this appalling job is making me cringe. So it's a good job I have a professional coming to help me with the final preparations and to make sure it's absolutely ready for paint. Thank you. 
The only thing putting too much filler on does for you is give you a dead arm when it comes to sanding it off. After doing a few spots I can already see an improvement, so it's all just about practice. Now all of the lower spots are done, I can move on to the windscreen. It's been such a long time since I started this, I'd forgotten what they looked like before. So let's just have a quick before and after montage to remind ourselves. There are still around 4 welds on the bottom of this car that need grinding down and coating with a proper sprayable undersill. Something I have and will do before the respray, probably next episode. This corner didn't need any filler, but I wanted to come back in with the welder and go over some of the more amateur spot welds with nice strong bead welds, and also a few more spot welds. With the whole thing looking much stronger, I'm going to apply rust converter to the whole area. The next task is to mask up everything in the engine bay that I'm not going to remove.
I'm taking a quick break from masking to remove some of the bits that are definitely going to get in the way, starting with these small heat shields. I can now disconnect the steering rack and remove the steering box. Up next is the sway bar that runs along the back of the engine bay and connects to the front suspension. These old transverse control arms are going to be replaced with brand new ones as the rubbers are completely perished. With the brackets off and the sway bar loose, I'm still not able to wiggle it free. So what I'm going to do is prep and paint it on the car, wait for it to dry fully and then mask it before painting the engine bay. I actually forgot to film me painting it, so instead here's some more rust converting some of the bare metal parts just as a precaution. At some point during this masking I paint and dry the sway bar before masking it itself. With all of the masking done, I quickly have some filler to add to these three repairs at the very front of the engine bay and I'll be good to paint. The very last job was to mask the rest of the car up with help from my dad who was paying me a visit.
To make an everything an even shade of black, I'm using Quartz High Build Primer, sprayed at very low PSI so I don't have to flatten it with sandpaper. I did all of these coats over a very long period of time, with an extractor right next to me and the main workshop one going, and I've obviously edited it right down for your enjoyment. I then baked the primer for around 20 minutes using the fast mover infrared lamp. Up next is the manganese brown base coat, or mangan braun met as it's known in Germany. Same again here, lots of little bits done over a long period of time, gradually building it up, basically just colouring it in as I went. I think these shots are from about halfway through the paint job, but you get the idea. The final coats were done with quartz crystal clear to finish the job. I lifted the car up on each of the coats to get better access to the underside and harder to reach places in the engine bay. And there we go, what a big difference a bit of paint makes. I'm quite happy with how this turned out, possibly some of the best painting I've done. Again, like the primer, I'm baking it around 60 degrees for 20 minutes in each corner. Before the paint dries at all, I'm going to remove some of the masking that comes into contact with it to stop it from pulling it up once it's dry. With everything completely cured, I can now remove the rest of the masking and take a look at the finished results. And there we have it, a few steps closer to the spray booth and getting this thing rebuilt and back on the road. The next episode should be the final bodywork and the respray in a professional spray booth, done by a professional. So look forward to that and in the meantime the 325i Sport is now on its way back to the UK and the works on the engine from the 316i Touring are about to be done. So we can pick that project back up shortly. Taking this Mercedes on has been a bit hectic, but it's definitely taught me a lot and I look forward to finishing my first car on the channel not too long from now. So thanks for watching, take care and I'll see you soon.